Okay, this is episode two of Who Was the Bishop of Jerusalem Named James? Uh, and give us more background about him. And so far we've seen he was appointed by the apostles to be the bishop upon the right immediately after the crucifixion. And he was the leader uh, who would make decisions for the group as a whole. That's why he was acting in that role in Acts 15. And we uh, can see that uh, he was considered or you had the moniker or a surname or whatever you might call it, but a short name called the righteous or the just. And in Hebrew, this is the word Zadik. And this helps helped Eisenman conclude that the Dead Sea Scroll writings were of the, the, the uh, Ebion, the original church under James, because it repeatedly in the Dead Sea Scrolls, the leader of the group after his after the Messiah has been killed by the priests in the, in the um, at Jerusalem uh, and the Messiah has left but will return. G this person, the Zadik, is left in charge over the group over the group, and it was called a New Covenant group, and it was followers of the Way. I mean, all kinds of parallels to <laughs> to our church. Uh, as we know it. So let's get into it and continue our study of who was uh, Bishop James of Jerusalem. Okay, so I want to um, go into the fact that in the, uh, writing, the writings of the early church is that Jesus is in the Davidic line. And that's why, and the reason why James is accepted over the 12 and also accepted among the Jewish people is he's in the Davidic line, meaning both of these gentlemen are in the line that Joseph represents, okay, according to the early church, okay? Now that, you may not like the implications of that, but that would suggest that Jesus was sired by Joseph, okay? And there is actual evidence in the early church manuscript, the Sinaiticus that was found that that's exactly what it says without any hesitation. And uh, it just calls jo Joseph uh, begat Jesus. Boom. And then you have, in the 200s, you can see there are two manuscripts that were, uh, or two works that just matter-of-factly mention that it says in those accounts, Joseph begat Jesus. Now, there's controversy of why and how it got changed and whatever, but that's, that's the evidence that's out there. Uh, and if Jesus is not in the Davidic line, doesn't have a Davidic father, he is can't be Messiah because there's like four different passages that says he has to be of the flesh of a Davidic heir, somebody in the line of David. And it's not Mary. She, she's a Levite and Levites are essentially, you know, left to be, marry Levites, although she married a Davidic a person from the Judaic line. So that's a whole nother question why she did that. Okay, so anyway, um, there was a myth that Mary was the perpetual virgin, and this was forced on Roman Catholic, Catholic historians, and so that's why they want to always ignore why James was made the head of the Jerusalem church, okay? So you, this is why you never hear about James in Catholicism, and you definitely don't hear about him in Protestantism um, very much. Uh, and, but Protestant, uh, the Catholic Church doesn't like it because they want to say Peter is the head of the church because that's their alleged authority for wh why they are in charge. They think they're in charge of all of Christianity because they're the heirs of Peter, which they self-appointed themselves, incidentally. Um, so, uh, more, I shouldn't say they self-appointed. That's what Constantine did. He changed the, the Roman church into the, the center of Christianity, or they tried to. And that's how their theory was. It was through Peter, but even Peter wasn't head the head of the church. And that was, so the, the effort to make Peter be the head of the church was contrafactual when you study and you know James is the actual head of the church. The 12 were told by Jesus, none of you would be the head of this, your, your group. So, you know, don't let it be like you as it's among the Gentiles. So ironically, what that means is not one of the apostles couldn't have one of themselves rule over themselves. But they could have his, Jesus' brother administrate over them and basically be their ruler, but not in a sense that's uh, highly structured. And you can see James is a very fluid kind of guy. He's not, he's not pushy. He's just pretty mellow in Acts 15, and he makes a very reasoned, thoughtful ruling there. 
Okay. Uh, so, and then the, so the reason that we're going to learn that James was chosen is he was in the bloodline of David. So this means Mary and Joseph had to be his parents. So Jerome here is puzzled at what he's reading. He cannot fully absorb it, absorb it because it does not fit within the paradigm that the Bishop Rome Bishop of Rome was teaching. So we'll see here. That's uh, that's exactly what's going on. He is not getting it. So uh, here. So let's let's pick up a little bit more. Pick up some speed. Eusebius records that Hegesippus, remember he's a contemporary of James and li outlives him a little bit, explained that Jude was also, quote, the brother of the Lord according to the flesh. He does a, he do, goes on to explain, and this is important, that Domitian commanded all the de descendants of David be slain. Domitian's a ruler of Rome. And this ended up aimed at Jude and his relatives. And this is in Eusebius, Ecclesiastical History, Book 3, Chapter 19. So think about what that implies. Since the Jude is the brother of Jesus according to the flesh, right? And Eusebius is mentioning that Jude is being drawn in by Domitian for a hearing because he wants to have all the descendants of David be slain. Therefore, Jude, a brother of James and a brother of Jesus, is of the Davidic line, therefore James is of the Davidic line, therefore Jesus should be of the Davidic line, and he must be of the Davidic line to be a Messiah. So he has to have a Davidic father or he won't be our Messiah. So that's a whole other problem for Christians. Anyway, Jude, the account continues, was examined by Domitian. Jude explained the kingdom of Christ was a heavenly angelic kingdom. Domitian asked about Jude's income and assets. When done, Domitian deemed him of no account and let him go. So, praise God, Jude was able to escape uh, Domitian. Then Hegesippus Hegis says, upon release, Jude and his relatives, quote, ruled the churches because they were the witness witnesses and were also relatives of the Lord. So again, this is, this is uh, proof that Jude was regarded as a Davidic line, and this was well after James has already been killed. Jude is the successor, uh, or actually he's outlived his brother J James. And Jude is clearly of the Dominic line because of what we just heard. So that's a help help to figure out James is of the Davidic line. If James is of the Davidic line, so should Jesus be of the Davidic line. The precedent to select the Davidic heir to rule as bishop was already established when the apostles selected James. This is made even clearer in the writings of Epiphanius in his Panarion, 29.3.4, an orthodox anti-heresy work of the late 300s. Epiphanius discussed how King Herod, a foreigner, put on the diadem that belonged to the anointed rulers in David's line. However, this Davidic line was, and this is the quote from Epiphanius, transferred to the church, the Davi this Davidic line was transferred to the church from the house of Judah. So Davidic line is from Judah, by the way and Israel, which is of the flesh, but the throne is established in God's holy church forever. The throne whose royal and high priestly dignity rests on two bases, the royal dignity from coming from our Lord Jesus Christ in two ways, from the fact that he is of King David's seed according to the flesh. Do you hear that? Epiphanius is saying <laughs> Jesus is of King David's seed according to the flesh. So not everybody got the message about the virgin birth, just so you know. And from the fact that he is, as certainly true, a greater king from eternity in his divinity. And the priestly dignity coming from the fact that he is high priest and chief of high priests. James, having been ordained at once the first bishop. So we've already established that. We've seen that. Who is called the brother of the Lord. And we already saw that. We find as well that he is of David's stock through Joseph's son. Meaning he's Joseph's son because he's Joseph's son. And we have found furthermore that he exercised the priesthood according to the priestly order of old. So the other thing is, De uh, James is allowed to exercise priestly functions. And according to, uh, this is, hold on. According to, this is Epiphanius, he is saying it's because it was according to the, quote, priestly order of old, meaning the Levites. Um, but the reason for that is probably because his mother Mary is a Levite, and so he's considered uh, adequately close to being the Levitical uh, lineage. Therefore, he would be 
tolerated to be the priest because, of course, he's also this extremely popular and uh, person who's called the righteous one. Uh, Epiphanius, right? It's Epiphanius. Epiphanius continues, and this is around the 300s, right? He says, Thus it was permitted him, meaning James the Just, once a year to enter the Holy of Holies. Think about that. As the law ordered the high priest according to what is written, so say many of the historians before of him, Eusebius, Clement, and others. So this isn't just uh, Epiphanius saying this. This is Eusebius says it somewhere, Clement says it somewhere, and so on. So that he was allowed to go in once a year and do the basically the, on the Day of Atonement, which tells you how little this, how re- little the regard was of the Jewish people for anybody but James, because they were all corrupt appointees of Herod. So they were all. Not not of anything really truly acceptable, but James was very acceptable. He had both the lineages of David and he had the lineage through his mother of the Levites. He was this is interesting. He was also allowed to wear the plate, the royal de- diadem on his head, as the aforementioned and trustworthy men have related in their accounts. So wow, there, and there, there were all these accounts. We don't see him anymore, but he was spoken of very highly in Jewish literature at that time. Thus, James had both the Davidic line in his blood as well as the priestly line, which was because Mary's family were Levites. We, we can go to that in the footnote. James was allowed to wear the royal diadem of David due to his lineage in David's line. Okay, which also means that that corroborates that Jesus, as long as there's proof that Joseph was his father, and like I told you, there's original writings of the early church from the 200s, two works, were written as just letters. Uh, uh, to, uh, letter to Trifo was one, which called, which just quoted that saying Joseph begat Jesus, and there was another letter of that same era of the same type. Just matter of fact, we just mentioned that the passages said Joseph begat Jesus, and then you have Sinaiticus say Joseph begat Jesus, and then suddenly you have it completely erased and gone after that time period. You don't see it anymore. And truly, if Jesus isn't sired by Joseph, then we really don't have a Messiah. And I hate to tell people that so bluntly, but, you know, we depend upon being open to listen to the historical evidence, which is that Jesus, James, Jude were all Davidic in the Davidic line, and Mary had each one of them. And all of these myths that were created by the Roman Catholic Church were all designed to perpetuate a completely pagan idea of Trinity of Horus, Sol Invictus and Osiris, the mother, and may, and they try to make Mary this holier than thou person, and that she could, she had to be a virgin from birth, uh, you know, she had to give virgin birth, and so this was just the the consequence of making a marriage. Basically, the church made a marriage in hell with Constantine because he was not a Christian at all, and I'm, I'll prove that in a series. You'll see. All right, um, let me see how many, much time we spent. 11 minutes so far, so let me just pause here and see what the, the total time is and see if we should break for another episode. Okay, so we can continue. Uh, yes, we're recording. So now we can continue where we were. Um, all right, so let's just go back here. All right, so Josephus even records similar high honors bestowed on James. This is very interesting. You know, I, I forget about these things myself. This is, I haven't read this for years. Josephus even records similar high honors bestowed on James that he was allowed to serve as high priest in the temple. So what what is recorded by Epiphanius, which you might not have thought would end up in Josephus, Josephus is, is, this tells you how central of character James was that Josephus, is a, who's a good historian, would have gotten close enough to what's going on in Jerusalem and actually recorded the same facts that Epiphanius has independently, and truly they are independent. Jo- Josephus was not, was not, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's some questions people have about certain passages of Josephus, but none of these are in question. These are very authentic uh, passages. This is not surprising, as one might assume. One must remember that Caiaphas was appointed a high priest by Herod, the puppet ruler of the Romans, and hence was a collaborator. You know, so nobody liked Caiaphas. <laughs> he was not appointed according to the Bible requirements. Thus, the most observant Jews did not respect Caiaphas' spiritual rights, even if he was otherwise respectable. 
James, by contrast, held the superior right by not only being respectable in conduct, what jo Josephus emphasizes, but also by being in the bloodline of David and also a Levite, so he could serve priestly functions. In other words, the treatment by the Jews of James as a Davidic heir was because of his personal holiness, Levitical bloodline, as well as his royal bloodline from David. Regardless, the point we are trying to make is that Epiphanius says the apostles ordained James the first bishop of Jerusalem and made him head of the church. So I think there's absolutely no question on that. Again, it's going to be very controversial uh, with uh, uh, Eisenman. Just these, what I think you can just see is just basic facts. Um, I'm just going to show you here a little detail that proves that Mary uh, is likely from the Levitical line. So it's crucial. Okay. Uh, let's see, John the Baptist was father was a priest, Luke 1, 5. And hence, his father had to be a Levite to be a priest. Mary's relative was Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, 1, verse 36. So Mary's related to uh, uh, a, a woman, Elizabeth, whose husband is a priest, therefore he's a Levite. Now, because Elizabeth is a daughter of a Levite, she must intermarry within her own tribe of the Levites. Now Mary doesn't do that. No, nobody ever mentions that. But she doesn't end up doing that. So apparently it's not a hard and fast rule. But pretty much if Elizabeth is marrying somebody who is a Levite, she's going to be a Levite. So I think the answer is maybe women could marry outside of the tribe of the Levites. But a Levite priest couldn't marry outside the tribe. So he had to find a Levite wife. So that's probably how they, they applied that law. So she's definitely a Levite. Elizabeth is is that, which means Elizabeth being a relative of Mary means Mary, Mary's relative <laughs> Elizabeth is a Levite, so Mary must be a relative. Thus, because Mary was a cousin of Elizabeth, this means Mary's father was also a Levite. So you get that clear picture. This explains why Mary's son James was permitted to serve the priestly function even by non-Christian Jews. Therefore, Jesus as well as James were both in the line of David and were Levites. Now, just to show you a mistake, uh, okay, I'm going to pause it here. I want to talk to you about Barnabas in the book of Hebrews, and I just want to uh, put it on a different slide. Okay, I'll be back in a uh, flash. Okay, I've decided not to uh, throw anything in this episode on Melchizedek. This is about James, and I want to keep the time short. Also, I think uh, Melchizedek, Melchizedek deserves a special... Uh, treatment all by himself. Okay, so anyway, that should be the end of this episode, and thank you for watching. Ciao. Bye.